Hi everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Mark Wilton and I've worked at Angling Trust for the past six years. I'm also a passionate angler myself and involved with my local angling club committee. For those of you who do not know what the Angling Improvement Fund is, let me quickly explain. The Angling Improvement Fund, commonly abbreviated to AIF, is a way of reinvesting income from fishing licence sales in projects which benefit anglers across England. The AIF is administered by the Angling Trust on behalf of the Environment Agency, who provide the funding through the sale of non-migratory trout and coarse fishing licences, i.e. rod licences. Since its launch in 2015, the AIF has made over 600 separate awards totalling over £2.4 million to clubs and fisheries and other organisations which aim to improve the infrastructure of angling facilities, all of which support the national angling strategy by safer and more accessible facilities and better habitats, which in turn enable clubs and fisheries and other angling organisations to flourish and attract more anglers into the sport. The total worth of the programme to date, taking into account the match funding applicants are asked to contribute, is an estimated £6.25 million, which has created and safeguarded tens of thousands of angling opportunities throughout England. We have funded some really excellent and varied projects over the years, and I must say a big thank you to all the club officials that have contributed to the success of this funding. Without you, much of what we have done together simply would not have been possible. Up until 2018, the AI has helped fund a variety of different types of projects, including various ways to help tackle the predation of fish stocks, the replacement of fishing pegs and platforms, improvements to pathways, car parking facilities, and the construction of new toilets, etc. Plus it provided bursaries to over 200 new coaching licenses. However, in the past two years, the AIF now focuses its efforts in two ways. First and foremost, it continues to offer funding towards projects that protect valuable fish stocks from predation by mammals and fish eating birds. And secondly, in the last few months, it has again provided funding to attract and retain new participants into the sport, this time through its Get Fishing initiative, which was covered off in the forum event that we held a couple of weeks ago. Hence, this presentation I'm giving now is going to concentrate on the first aim of the fund, which is, which is to protect fish stocks from predation. In the last round of funding, i.e. the current financial year 2020-21, and despite the very best efforts of COVID and the weather, the AIF made another 49 awards totaling £209,000, of which 37 involved the installation of a new otter fence. Again, the successful awardees contributed significant amounts of both cash and volunteer time to ensure that these awards went as far as possible. We have estimated that the total value of these projects be worth an estimated £608,000. So, the first important thing to say is that the AIF is currently open to new applications. Please note that saying this, we do not currently have an agreed budget with the Environment Agency to fund any project, but a budget is highly likely to be announced very soon and will take effect from the new financial year in April. Hence, we are looking to generate a number of shelf-ready new projects that we can look at trying to assist as soon as possible. Our aim is again uh, to limit funding to a maximum of £5,000 per application. We have to do this as demand for this funding is always oversubscribed and we wish to try and uh, spread our funding that we have over a number of good projects. Our first deadline when we will be reviewing all applications that have been submitted is at midday on the 15th of April and I will tell you more about how to apply in a second. Those applications will then be judged by senior representatives from both the Angling Trust and the Environment Agency, which we hope to have completed by early to mid-May, by which time we will have been advised on exactly how much funding has been made available. Hence, awards can then start to be made from mid to late May, subject to any conditions that we might impose. Please note that you should not, not start your project until any funding has been agreed with us and we cannot provide any retrospective funding. 
The application portal will remain open until the end of July, when it will then be uh, closed. Subject to what funding we might have left over from the first uh, initial uh, judging, or if the EA have managed to find some additional monies, those applications will then be judged and hopefully funded, but there is no guarantee of that. <clears throat> the fund is open to any organisation that is already providing and angling opportunities at the same venue where the funding is needed for, but an individual person cannot apply. Those organisations who normally apply include fishing clubs, commercial fisheries, local councils, who often have pools that they uh, rent out to uh, angling clubs, plus any syndicates. But please be aware that any successful applicant will be expected to have their own bank account in the name of the organisation that is applying. It is often the case that when we are involved with syndicates, they should be aware of this because it quite often when we've approved their application, uh, we then uh, move on to find out that they do not have their own bank account in their name of the syndicate. And this can cause delays and issues as we will not pay any funding into an individual person's own private bank account. So please be aware of this fact. So how do you apply? <clears throat> well, the first thing that you will need to do is to read the details that we have made available on a funding page on the Angling Trust website. Go to our home page where you will see some tabs at the top of the page and one is called Freshwater. Click into that and then onto the link titled Funding. The web address is displayed on this slide. Within that page you will find a number of pictures and tabs that you can click on that will take you to more details about various different funds that are open at the moment, including the Angling Improvement Fund. Once you've clicked into the AIF details, you then need to read the information that it takes you to. Within those details are some important links. For instance, there's a link to some guidance notes. Now these are very important and anyone thinking of applying must read these as they contain lots of useful information and tips on what we are looking for. There's also a link to the Fishery Management Advisors Service. This is a free service that the Angling Trust offer. We have two chaps, Jake Deville, who covers the south, and Richard Banforth, who covers the north of the country. Their details, together with uh, other details, that are again available on, on this website. I have to say that these blokes are excellent, and we'll be able to give you loads of expert advice that, and help with any predation issues that you may have. Plus, there are pages and help and advice on otters and fish-eating bird problems also on our website, and it's well worth reading these in advance of making any application. When you're ready to apply, there's a link to access the grant uh, management system stroke portal, where you will find the application form. But please note, we only accept applications submitted by this system. No app paper applications will be accepted. The first thing you need to do on the portal is to register yourself and your club officially in order to get access into the application form. Once you have successfully completed this simple task, you can then log into, the, into it and select the AIF application form. But please note, there are currently two application forms available on the system, so make sure you select the AIF one. It's then a case of answering a series of questions in which we, you will be guided as to what to answer. These questions include a summary of your project. This is very important and you must get this right as it's the first time the judges read uh, anything about your project and it gives them a flavour about what the project is about. Please don't make it too short and don't make it too long uh, and make it interesting so that it grabs their attention. Another question asks you to explain what expert advice you have sought. I've just spoken about this already, and this is something we take very seriously. So don't ignore it, otherwise your application will almost certainly fail or be seriously delayed. You will need to explain how you uh, will deliver your project. Some applicants wish to make use of a professional fencing contractor, if, assuming you're uh, applying for an otter fence, that is to ensure that the new fence is installed correctly. Other time, times you may have people or members available in your club that have the necessary skills to undertake the work yourselves. We don't mind what you choose, 
but you must answer the question in a way that gives the judges the confidence that you know exactly what you're doing. Because not everybody is competent with a large hammer and drill, believe me. You will also need to explain the impacts the project will have at the venue. And there is a further question that explains the costs of the project. And if possible, we prefer you to use actual costs rather than estimates here. I mentioned earlier about the need to provide some match funding. Ideally, we will look for you to contribute 50% of funding towards the costs of the project. Your contribution can be in the form of a financial contribution, that's cash, some voluntary time and or any donations that you're able to uh, obtain. Or, better still, get a mixture of all three of these elements. Any application that does not contribute anything to the project will not get funded. You will also be given the opportunity to upload supporting documentation into your application, e.g. quotes for the materials you require, contractor's fees, and any reports you have obtained or written yourselves. And it's always good to upload a picture of the venue itself so the judges can get an idea of what it looks like. We receive lots of applications, many of them asking for the same thing, an not offence. To help make your application stand out for the rest, explain within the application what your club is doing. Yes, you know what uh, you want an not offence, but because those, an because those animals are eating your fish, but well, tell us what else the club is, is doing or done. How do you promote your club? How do you attract new members to your club? What are you doing regarding coaching or holding events or family days or get fishing events? All these add to the benefit of your application. I've already mentioned some tips, but here are a few more that will help you. For instance, do you have a development plan that you're working to? If so, mention it, or better still, attach it as one of your supporting documents. Do you have a maintenance plan? This is very important, as it demonstrates that you already know what you need to do at the venue on a regular basis. A new water fence will need constant inspection for any weak points or areas where perhaps a branch or a tree has fallen onto it, and it's made, uh, it made it possible for an entry point for an otter to get through. Otters are very clever, and you will need to be amazed at what they will do to get a free meal, just ask one of our experts. Please think very carefully if you're going to install a fence yourself. Whilst it may be cheaper to do this, you will need to have all the right tools to do it with, uh, and of course to a satisfactory standard. You must also be fully aware of any health and safety issues that you'll be faced with, and all projects should be undertaking various risk assessments in order to comply with your insurance requirements. I literally cannot stress too highly important health and safety issues are. If possible, please obtain more than one quotation for the work you intend to do. You'll be surprised the difference in some of the prices we have seen. So, once you have done everything I have mentioned above and completed your application form, there is a tab at the end of the form that says submit. Press this and your application status will change and we will then know that you are finished with it. On the 15th of April, we will take a look at all those applications that have been submitted at that point. This, this does take quite a while, and there's quite a lot of work involved, and sometimes we have to request changes or clarification or additional information from you, the applicant, before we can uh, pass your application on to the judges to review the document. Quite often, once an application has then been reviewed by the judges, Further information is required before any offer is made. We will look to make our first awards in May, which will give, us plenty, give you actually plenty of time in the dry season to get your project finished before the winter sets in again. The portal will remain open until the end of July when we will review the remaining applications. So there we go, a very quick review of what we're trying to do with this popular grant fund. I should say that when you log on to the online portal, you will also see another application form from the uh, Environment Agency's Fisheries Improvement Programme. More details of this form can be found on the funding page that I mentioned on our website. This one is also open and well worth looking into if you have 
uh, any other projects or improvements you wish to make at your venue. Overall, there's never been a better time, I feel, for clubs and fisheries to invest in their facilities. Last year saw a huge increase in rock market sales following the exit from the first lockdown, and it would be great if those new anglers could see the work and effort that we are all doing to try and improve the facilities available. Thanks for listening.